<laughs> when, when Charles and Marjorie come here, that's what the house looks like. Oh, weathered really? pine. Wow. Board and batten, weathered pine Crazy. with a tin roof that was rusted and leaking. It didn't look like that. It didn't have any white paint on it and green trim. And it didn't have shakes on the roof. It had tin. Wow. Rusty tin. Now, was all this stuff in here? Was all this stuff here bars? No. Okay. No. The As barn. In fact, this barn's a replica. All oh, the barn's the a barn, replica. Uh, okay. It came down in the 90s. Okay. It was in park, the park hands at that time. And it was unsavable. Okay. Um, and the reason that good heart pine, you know what heart pine mm -hmm. is? Yellow southern pine mm -hmm. that's grown for centuries. Oh, wow. And the resin builds up in it. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> it turns into iron. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason that good heart pine collapses is because it never got sealed up with paint. Oh, oh wow. In 20 years, the moisture will get to it. Wow. And the reason the house mm -hmm. is... Has so this is a replica, pine, guys. She had a first coat of paint after Saffron and Under was published. Now, how about termites? Termites don't like it. Oh, really? Yes, because it's resin. Okay. They don't like oh. to eat resin. They like to eat wood. And there's so much resin in it that that's not their favorite thing to eat. Really doesn't mean that a, that a, a termite crazy. wouldn't cut you. It has had, you know, it can be, but it won't be eaten through. Right. You know? Oh, how about that? Um, because they don't want resin. It's probably pretty bitter That's to why them. these old cracker houses are still around. Exactly why. It's not termite proof. Right. But it certainly is resistant. Now, that barn, we've had to turn my tree a couple of times. Because it's just regular thing. Yeah. And they can get into that and not encounter so much resin. Yes. Oh, I'm hearing a little more thunder. I'm glad. <laughs> it got real hot when that thunder <laughs> Did the car belong to her? No, it's what she had, though. A 40 old Oh, car. really? Oh, Same car? Yeah. Okay. And that's oh. a, um, a stand-in. Someone gave us that. Oh, wow. We took 500 bucks and went to Gainesville with the yearling money. Uh-huh. And um, bought herself a new car. Oh, wow. And, uh, I see a wasp inside it. Yeah, <laughs> they <laughs> nest in there and yeah. stuff. She also bought a cottage on Crescent Beach when she made that money. Oh. But so she had an escape in the summer. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, she's here year-round. Is the cottage still there? Cottage is still there. Is it? Cottage me on. <sighs> Been redone several times. I hope wow. they're going to do something with it when they, you know. You know, they're good people and they have a heart for her. Yeah. Uh, but it's private. Yeah. Because they don't want people coming out there. Although we will, on, on request and with a little organizer, we'll have an event there or do something there. Yeah. So people can come and see it. Look at the roofs. Look like it has wood on the roof for shingles. Yeah. Yeah. This is the original far farmhouse that was built. This is the eldest of the three buildings. 1884, Cracker Farmhouse. And that Cracker style is 10 foot tall ceilings on the inside. And up on tiers, board and batten, hard pine. The only way you cool yourself is with the cross -breaker. And that's the only thing they had. Um, no air conditioning. No air conditioning. We didn't have fans or anything. So this is a very hostile climate, very hostile living conditions. Wow. Um, she says that two of the summers here were unbearable. I can really see. Two of them were uncomfortable. The rest of them she did with pleasant. Those were the wet ones. But right now, oh, it's yeah. summer. These are, this is not been a bad couple of weeks with all those rainfall. Yeah. So that's what you get a pleasant summer. Oh, okay. You get a lot of rain. If yeah. you don't have rain, it's just too much. Miserable. So uh, when they got here, there was no screen porches. There was no screens in the windows. No screens in the windows. Imagine that. How do they do it? They slept under a uh, mosquito net. Uh, oh, wow. Out. And that's the way it was when they first got here. Because they had to leave the windows open. Now, oh, at night, sure. You yeah. Could, you'd be suffocated and you didn't have the windows. And that's when the mosquitoes come up. Yeah. You know, when the sun goes down. Yeah. You, they would be eating you alive. So that's how, this was the tropics. Essentially, that's how they lived it. So that's the 1884 farm now. Two rooms. The first farm family in there before they uh, added a little lean-to room on the other side and then the kitchen and dining room that building out on the other side of this came along 1900. Oh okay. So uh, that was up when they get here as was that bedroom way which was uh, not built by but purchased by the previous owners the Armstrongs whom they bought the farm from. They had three daughters and they needed more bedroom space. And they bought that from the neighboring farm, and they dragged it over here on mule team. Oh, wow. Uh, so <laughs> here, all three buildings were here. 
It just didn't look anything like this. So oh, wow. Room, she added two bathrooms. She had no bathrooms when she got here. It's just the outhouse. I've seen the outhouse. Is that where it was originally yes, at? Yes, right Wow. There. She writes about that in Cross Creek, yeah. too. She calls it the misplaced edifice. <laughs> <laughs> the infernal box. Oh, she writes a whole chapter about it. The evolution of comfort. Oh, wow. So come on through the house. And if you wait here, I will have to go inside. And <laughs> they locked us out. It's crazy. They just drugged that from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's 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 right. it's neat how they can move a house. Yeah. They can move a whole house. Especially like that. It must be made yeah. really good underneath, nice. because to be able to move a house, it has to be made really good underneath. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To be able to move well, it. This house wasn't moved. That was moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just that one. Thank you, Martha. Wow. This one is, is built on. Oh, look. oh, this would be nice to sleep out oh. here. You can feel the difference. Oh, oh yeah. that was good. Yeah, getting all the way in. Wow. Yeah. So, see, these crackers, I'll tell you, they weren't as sophisticated. They were smart. smart. It's very yeah. smart and sophisticated. Oh, there's a fan. I was like, where is that fan? The porch gets oh. built that when she can afford it. It wasn't built out in this bar. Okay. She tells you in Cross Creek. It was only wide enough to put a chair and walk in front of. Wow, so she built the porch out. Is near the original overhang end. Oh. Where the beam in? Yep. Oh, okay. So it was a short porch. Okay. These old crackers were. Yeah. They didn't have any French doors or anything. So she builds this out when she can afford it, and this is where she works. Charles built the table and chair set. That's wow. cypress wood. Oh, it's the beautiful. Table and chairs. Wow. The seats and chairs are deer high. The base oh. of the table is a cabbage palm trunk. And cabbage mm -hmm. palms are the state tree of Florida. Okay. Also known as sable palms. Yeah. And um, that was his chair, the off chair, right? The captain's chair. And when he leaves, that's where she, she takes over. And that's where she works. Oh. She, um, when she's on a project, first thing in the morning, she'll work through the day. Um, she writes eight books, 23 short stories, thousands of letters and other projects. And that's her spot on earth. Wow. Surrounded by her orange trees. I and mean, these trees are full of fruit, brightly colored fruit, burnished gold lanterns lit from within. Oh. That's how she describes them. It wasn't about oranges. They didn't come here for oranges. They came here for rain. And oranges, though. Peace, come, tranquility. Yeah. Paradise. Oh, yeah, she definitely. Found she found paradise. And they were her motivation and their inspiration. And those are all of her books? Those are the, her titles. Her titles. We have a couple of her books. Her books, her papers. For the oh. most part, they're at the University of Florida. Oh, wow. In the Spathers Library, in the proper place, in temperature control, in humidity right. control. Right. And she is the largest of all the archives in, at the University of Florida. Oh, my. She gave it all. There's yeah. one other box that went up to South Carolina that her executrix sent up there, uh, Julia Scribner, the daughter of Scribner, the publishing oh. family. And she wound up sending a box of her things up to. South Carolina, but the vast majority of them is here at the university. Wow. So this is where it happens. This is where uh, the, the, her creative center is right here. She can't write anywhere like she can here. As hot as it is in here, it's beautiful. Yeah, right. It is beautiful. And we're in summer. It's so pretty. Right. You know, and this is summer. Yeah. Can you imagine not having air conditioning during the summer? Yeah. No. That is so Oh, I it's love that chair. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. that chair. That's a Sleepy Hollow chair. Oh, I love they it. They brought that down from New York with them. Sleepy Hollow. Oh, yeah. And this is a faking couch. It's a companion piece. Get that red velvet. Oh. They just brought a few pieces down. They didn't that is a move. fainting couch? That's what they called it. Well, if they I feel like I'm going to faint, I go over yeah, there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> when you get the vapors, you head for that. <laughs> and, and when they came down here, they weren't, what? What's this one over here? Oh. That closet? Yeah. It's a closet. Well, when they first got here, uh, that, that originally, let me back up, that originally was used as a pantry because the first oh. family cooked there and the kitchen hadn't been built oh. and this was the whole farmhouse right here. Yeah. So they oh, used just it. this piece here? This was it. This was it. Oh. So it was two rooms. So there was a this dividing was the wall. Side, and this was the sleeping side. Oh, and wow. Over here, cook, eat, and they had that small yeah. porch. And, oh, yeah. Uh, they would cook on the hearth. With, you know, there's andirons in there and everything. Oh. And that would be their pantry. 
because it was like it was the kitchen. Yeah. Right. And um, when Marjorie and Charles get here, they don't need to cook there because the kitchen had been built. So she has another use for that closet, uh, a more practical use. That's her liquor cabinet. Yeah. 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 So she says in the winter time it was firewood on the bottom and fire and water on the top. Ah, uh, yeah. She tells on herself. She doesn't try to hide any of her bad habits. She is who she is. And she's not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. I am who I am. Oh, wow. And you love me or don't. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, she buys the generator in 39 when the money from the yearling comes in. She was on oil lamps. That was her source of light for 10 years. Oil lamps. Oil lamps. And, uh, and then she can buy a cold regenerator. She has the house wired. And they drop a, they wire the house and they drop a barrel light bulb from the ceiling uh, and, and uh, on a cord, which is what they did then. Mm -hmm. uh, problem is, although it's a great advance in you know, electric lights, yeah. you can't look at them because their they're unforested bulbs are so bright. Yeah, so you know? bright. Wow. So you had to cover them up. Oh. How do you cover them up? Well, there's no Home Depot down the road. <laughs> Her idea was to get her wooden mixing bowls out of the kitchen. Yeah. Wow. And paint them white and suspend them from the ceiling. Oh, and that's hey, what they are. It's a good idea. And that is, they've survived. Do it yourself. <laughs> there, one over here. Yeah. So she turned this derelict, and that dividing wall was still up. It was gray when they got here. It was overrun. Hadn't been lived in mm -hmm. for a year. It was overgrown. It was full of rats and mice and snakes and mud daubers and everything. And she turns it into this slowly. I'm oh, sorry. I could live here. Just put some air conditioners in the window. <laughs> Love the property. It's so pretty. It is. I'm going to take some pictures. What's it called? The lean to. The lean to. It's lead board. It's not the board mat. So it's a little bit more modern. Mid 1890s. We don't know for certain exactly. But this was built as a spare bedroom. And that's what she uses it for. And we use it to just show her work. So mm -hmm. display her work. Oh, wow. This is the only thing we've got. This is the only concession. To, to this being a museum, because uh. it's in a case under glass. Otherwise, you know, as I have already said, it's all laid out. I should name it. The center shelf is her primary work. Wow. And I got uh, uh. up to um, the yearling. And then in 42, after the hotel was opened, she published Cross Creek. That is equally as successful as the yearling. Half a million copies in the first year. Wow. It has the same impact. It's a different too. And yeah. the yeah. chapter, and, and that's. And that's nonfiction. It's it's a little bit, you know, she really she admits she dresses it up. You know, she's a highly creative person. But it's all real people in there. Mm -hmm. Hundred and twenty people named by, by their real names. A living people when she wrote that. Um, the chapter in there that gets the most attention from the readers is called Our Daily Bread. She's a gourmet cook. Mm -hmm. Self made gourmet cook. It's her passion. Writing is not fun, easy. It deletes it depletes you. Okay. And she restores herself with her cooking. And we're serving people here. That's where the special is. Was it here? She says, You mm -hmm. can criticize my writing. I don't care. And she wouldn't bother. Literally. It's here. But don't be indifferent to my table. It's it's great. Great. <laughs> That's a pretty hard charge. Don't be indifferent. indifferent. Marjorie. Not right. just don't criticize it. Yeah, it's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Cross Creek Cookery comes out the same year, 1942. Oh. And uh, it instantly. Is she buried here? And she's got two. Yeah. Oh. And then, uh, it ultimately gets listed among the 100 most influential cookbooks in America. That's crazy. Not obvious. Okay. Uh, this was a uh -huh. passionate uh, individual. Maybe down who by St. Augustine. Uh, describe it and explain it to people. It's a wonderful book. It's still in print. So it's Cross Creek. So mm -hmm. it's Deerling. All mm -hmm. easy. Yet we have not been talking about. And this is the last book that is published as she dies. Do you? Just before she dies. The Sojourner in 1953. And um, she's got a respectable body of work. Mm -hmm. It's not a book every four months, you know. It's mm -hmm. not, This is all art. This is uh, literature. Yeah. It's difficult to produce. Um, there's a copy of her Pulitzer Prize. There are the armed services editions that were sent overseas with the soldiers. 
they, they oh, wow. took three of her books, put them into this small format, unabridged, every word, word for word, in these little formats. Wow. And those guys were all like 18, 19 years old, mm -hmm. and they could read in the dark almost. <laughs> and she got letters from hundreds of so oh. oh. Everybody got an original response. Oh my God. That's no amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah. No mm -hmm. Wow. She's, she uh, developed lifelong correspondences with some of these boys, and uh, she couldn't write fiction at this point. Yeah. The world was on fire. People were dying by the millions, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. everyone was eaten up, especially these guys. The yeah. Front. So she devoted her time to them. Yeah. Drove Maxwell Perkins crazy. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. She's at her peak right here. Yeah. Um, she was at her peak. Yeah. She couldn't, she couldn't. And there's a copy of the Pugil series as well. This is her in a writing chair that you saw. Oh, with okay. With her indoor pad. She asked the locals to take her out. And she's going to write about what she knows. And that was what Max advised her. She knew that. She figured mm -hmm. that out. She had to understand what they do. She didn't know it instinctively. Show me what you do. And they, after they get to know her, they take her out. She goes on the hunts. She goes on deer hunts, alligator hunts. Oh, oh wow. She goes, on hunts. she goes on a bear hunt. How else can you write no about way. a bear hunt? There's no other way to write about it. And she was on bear hunt several times with uh, Barney Dillard, the, the great bear wow. from the big Oh, oh pardon me, okay. okay. In her garden, on the back porch to the bedroom wing, on uh, salt springs, getting fresh water crabs. That's Norton. She'd bring them back here, and she would make a crab Newberg a la Cross Creek yeah. with Dora's cream. That was her Jersey cow's cream that she said it was like a gift from God for us. Mm. <laughs> Why are the windows so low in here? This was built, they were built to the ground. This porch mm -hmm. didn't exist when that was, when this was built. Oh. This spare room was added onto the farmhouse back wall, and they're correct to the ground. Yeah. She had porched it, as a matter of fact. And then there was, so you, you come out, and go on the ground, and you enter steps to go into the kitchen and dining room, mm -hmm. which has to be separate from the farmhouse yeah. for the heat and for fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did the porching, she had that done, and she enclosed some of the uh, roofing. So wow. she's made it into a one piece, 3,000 uh, 3, square foot house. This man, is, his name is Julian Bachnight. The Bachnights were original settlers uh, in this area. Just like the, the Long family was, whom she met and stayed with, and learned the story of the yearling. That's Cal Long, the man with the rifle. He, uh, Marjorie met him, stayed with that family for a couple of weeks, and they shared their story with her. And his brother Hal, his younger brother, when they were boys, adopted an abandoned farm and took it to raise. Aww. There's the story of the yearling. Oh, wow. And the Hollywood came out and filmed it on the spot where that cabin stood. So when you see that wow. movie, that's where the one family oh, lived. Oh, Their wow. fascinating story. There's, there's Chuck Rawlings, the oh. rakish looking guy. There's Barney Dillard, the famous bear hunter. Oh, okay. So Martin huh. found Marjorie learned about Snowfoot through Barney Dillard. Uh, he was known as a bad man, but he was a decent man. He didn't have 14 kids, and you know, he's a family man, mm -hmm. but he could go do the marathon. Yeah. He was the toughest guy. And this man is of the same ilk as them. Came down here from up north, you know, by ox car, put a cabin, still living, when Marjorie had a photo shoot from Life magazine was gonna do a piece about Marjorie. And George Carter, the famous photographer, was sat down and Marjorie said, Well let's go over and visit Mr. Bach Knight. And they're sitting on his cabin, poor fed off mile away from here, deep in the woods. And uh, so he's a genuine article. And you can see the way she's looking at him. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a respect there, mm -hmm. a reverence, even. Mm -hmm. These are the people that knew that she was the one who did it. They were the master for their fortitude and for their courage. And you didn't have to be a graduate of the university or whatever. She didn't require that. It was who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons they accepted her. Mm -hmm. She was so different, just incredibly different. Came in from up north. Wow, what does that make her? Yankee. Mm -hmm. Carpet. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right there, you know, you, you, you know how to chant. Mm -hmm. and, and she drank. She let people know she drank and she smoked cigarettes. And that's definitely honest. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she was open about it. And, and she was divorced. She was a divorced woman. And she wrote for a living. And, and she went to college. That room's winning back in those <laughs> days. She had everything on the X side. 
but they take her in and accept her as one of theirs because she didn't come here to poke them and see which way they move and then write about them. She came here to become them. That's what she did. How else do you write like this? Everything had to be uh, authenticated. Mm -hmm. Nothing had to, was, she wouldn't let it go to the publishers if it wasn't vetted and authenticated by people who knew. She didn't want to be someone making up stories about it. She wanted to recount the lives. She found them to be fascinating. I have a feeling you could turn that on. It was low dust. So, <laughs> oh, so, so hot. Nice. Move along quickly. Oh, well, it's it's kind of wow. stuffy. This Whoa. is the bathroom she builds when, when uh, she gets a check from Jacob's Ladder uh, mm -hmm. in 1931, a short story she had written, a beautiful short story. It, she goes from Cracker Chitlings, which is almost journalistic, <laughs> to Jacob's Ladder, which is straight literature, just like that. $700 check came from Scribner's. They published it. And she had 580 was owed in, in debt immediately. She got about 120 bucks left, and she decides that she's going to have to invest it Otherwise, it's going to slip right to her fingers. Mm. She invested in plumbing because all she has is an outhouse. Mm -hmm. oh, this is the bathroom that her, there was nothing here. This was an open space in the fair ground oh. between this thing that got dragged over by mules. Oh, and wow. So she just oh. built it in between. She built this. She said it was like an architect left it here intentionally to put a bathroom. Yeah. So she has Mo build this and they find the fixtures. Yeah. And uh, Mo does all the work, figures out how to plumb it in because there's no water system or sewer system down here. And if you have a toilet, you need sanitary sewer. Yeah. yeah. He figures it all out, and she's got the only bathroom across the creek. This wow. Is a big deal. Did people come to? She had a party. Oh, oh, yeah. oh I remember that. That's yes. right. She had a party. She had to show it off and let everyone see it. She tells us there was a tray of uh, glasses on that sink. Mm -hmm. You go come in, grab a glass. There's drinks and ice in the tub. You oh, the wow. Up, and then you toast. And the toilet had a big bouquet of roses in it. <laughs> she said that was the appropriate place for roses. Ah. Oh. Sweet smelling flowers. And uh, they came in and they toasted and went down the hatch. Oh, wow. They had a great wow. time, she said. It was a gala event. It's almost down to the shoals. Yeah. They could go to the outhouse. I bet so. <laughs> that is so cool. Play. Yeah, she probably didn't want everybody using her bathroom. Go back out to the outhouse. <laughs> well, you know, the roses you know, were made for the party. You know, you had right. a little gaiety. That's so, pretty cool, though. Watch out the step. Okay. Don't let it trip. Oh, look at this. <laughs> as soon as you get into the 10 foot ceiling situation, you can feel the difference. Mm -hmm. I'm um, cut in front of you. And, so right right and just a little fan. That's, yeah. Look this at that. Oh, well, I'm a guest tonight. <laughs> I need a place to stay tonight. <laughs> that's what you want. I don't care. Mo Sykes gave her this bed from his barn. It wasn't in use. And that's where her guests stay. And, um, wow, it's nice. 1700's bed. And wow. a lot of 1700's bed? bed? Yep. Oh, wow. Um, some of the people who slept in that bed were her, her peers, who, you know, among others who stay here. She's connected. She's not here to be a hermit. She wants him to come and see her shabby farmhouse. That's her name for it, not mine. And um, volumes yes. on the mantle are represent people who stay here as her guest. Oh, um, yeah, Robert Frost multiple times. Oh, Ernest Hemingway. Is there any more here? Yeah, she did. Oh, she had a great friendship wow. with her again. She, she wow. tried to mentor her. She, she connected with the Martin next to help her. Oh, you can fill the springs in that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Zora Neale had nothing but great things to say about Margaret. And um, Margaret Mitchell, she and Margaret Mitchell had great friendship. And a lot of comments about Famous. Oh, look at the sewing machine. And some of the other names were Wilder. Yeah. The guys. Miller Thomas. Old sewing machine. Yeah. Um, when Wilkie was presidential candidate and others. Gregory Peck stayed here. What is this, this the powder? Oh, yeah. All the glasses. Oh, wow. She Look at the camera. It's come a long way since that. Here. Here. Behind the door <laughs> stuff. He's still one of my favorites. Where's my picture on the wall? That's a woman named Gertrude Johnson who must have had a major impact on her life as a professor at the University of Wisconsin. This is, she put this oh, picture. It's in her possession. It's in her possession. Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever found out the history of that woman? Do you know? Do you folks know about? Oh that? yeah, yeah. She was very confident. These are all Margaret people that stayed here. She was a professor of drama, and she was at the highest level. All of the academic associations, presidents no, of, of the universities around the country. So she was a, a stalwart in the area of drama in academia, and she must have had a, a big influence on her. Marjorie acted uh, with Frederick Marsh, who was also in Wisconsin at that same time. Uh -huh. She had the star, a starring role in one of the and this girl had the game of the play was called Lionel Means. <laughs> How about that? How about that? And when you hear her talk, she projects. You can hear the projection. Yeah. And there are some voice recordings. Um, so how the heck did Gregory Peck get that bed? We don't know. Yeah. He's four, six, five. No. Oh wow. Oh, wow. You have to bend your legs. Whoa, right. Oh, is that the closet? <gasps> That's a closet. It's not a pass through. Her bedroom's on the other side of this wall. How do you, oh, you can't pass through? Oh, she had to go outside? To go on the porch, right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are those had, her actual clothes? We only have a few of her articles. Uh, a lot of it was wow. saved in an unair conditioned warehouse on the uh, beach uh, in St. Augustine. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of it didn't make it. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. All the hard goods did, though. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yes. So, when she had company at night, if she needed to use the bathroom, she'd go down the porch, and there's an outside door in that bathroom. Oh, wow. So it was easily accessible. Oh. So they could use it and she could use it. Right. Right. No, we're going out that way. Oh. So come on that's out smart. here. So this was all separate. Right, and we'll wow. go into her bedroom. Oh, that's so cool to have a separate living space. Where's your wraparound porch? <laughs> that's almost a wraparound. Almost, yeah. So there's her outhouse. It's, the outhouse. Wow. it's a beaut, isn't it? Yes. You ever see an outhouse with a full length screen door? <laughs> no. That's what that is. <laughs> and she writes about it. She said that's like not having a door. Yeah. Your ventilation is good. <laughs> but your privacy is shot. I'll tell you the rest of that story. Here's her bedroom. Oh, wow. There's the second bathroom across there. Look at that. Oh, oh she had her own goodness. bathroom. How pretty. Oh, it's got a weird smell, guys. Look at this. Very spacious. And then the commodes behind the toilet. Nice there. Commodes back there. Look at this. Right. She's even had a shower. I'm sorry. She's she's well no, she's addicted to beautiful things. Yeah. She had a shower up on the wall. And there's a story about that. Oh. The same chapter. They had to place that shower head. They didn't know what to do. No one had a shower. Right. Mo didn't know where to put it. They asked Martin, him and his four sons, they, they were old enough to help with the construction <laughs> of it, and they had to place it. Yeah. And Mo said, Marty, uh, we'll do this the right way. Tell us where you want this here shower head to hit stream of water to hit you. Get in the tub and show us where do you want the water to hit you. So she gets oh, wow. in the tub, she's got five men with her. <laughs> she said, if you felt so undressed and alive, you could still be dressed. So and that's that. part of that same uh, chapter. There's Marjorie as an 18-month-old. Aw, the baby. 18-month toddler in D.C. Aw. <laughs> you can see her adult That is face. so cool. Uh, over the mantle is Marjorie when she graduated from the University of Wisconsin. Wow. She was 22, uh, 1918. Um, That's beautiful there. Really beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. And across the room from her... It's fixing the storm. Second husband, and I told you about the story. Look at that. Very that he came to her he came from uh, Union Springs, Alabama. This is her clothes. And uh, he wanted to become a hotel man. So he headed to Florida, of course. And um, he came here to learn the business, and he gets tangled up the border walls. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, is this. this for real? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, it's none not? The, the paper, none of her typewriters. Okay. No one knows where they all. Um, oh, but this is a real typewriter. It's just not yeah. hers. Oh, of course. Oh, okay. From that era. From oh, era. wow. This goes into that other bedroom? No. Oh. Remember, on this side of the wall was, was the, the, closet. the closet. Yeah. Room, it's on that side. It's on that side. The space oh. Is where the fireplace is. Okay. So it was designed there. Yeah. And that's a mixing bowl. Another mixing bowl. <laughs> right. I love it. 
You're gonna go home and make some mixing bowl lights. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it around the pool. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh Where my goodness. Mixing bowls? <laughs> so, you now have, like, uh, she writes about this. It's maybe, I don't know. It's hard to say the most interesting chapter, but it's an integral part of Cross Creek. It's a chapter about the bathrooms and the outhouses. The evolution of comfort is the name of that chapter. She she winds up with an outhouse that's got a screen door on it. Oh, <laughs> she'll just like not having a door. You know, you, your ventilation's good, but your privacy is shot. I walked right up to it and didn't even realize it was a screen door. So you got there, and then you can see inside of it. Yeah. Your Uncle Fred is invited to come, and he makes the trip down. Where the bathrooms are built. Her favorite uncle he makes the trip, and um, she has a gathering of people. This is a, an occasion. He's the honored guest. She provides a beautiful gourmet meal. Uncle Fred is the, the as the honored guest. He's using the outhouse, and he gets walked up on by somebody. She explains by the time you're close enough to see if any anyone is behind that screen, it's too late. <laughs> you're exposed, <laughs> and he was embarrassed. Oh. He asked for the red cloth. He puts it on a stick. Oh. It stays in when it's empty and available. And whoever goes to use it has to take the cloth and put it outside. So the red flag is flying. Oh, and when okay. When the red flag flies, you don't walk up. Right. So no one gets embarrassed. And Uncle Fred got the credit for that. She invites him back <laughs> after the first bathroom got built. Dear Uncle Fred, come on back. I've got the indoor plumbing now. No more embarrassment. You can't make the trip. It's a long trip. He sends roses instead. <laughs> what does she do with them? In the Puts them in the toilet. Oh my. With his note card on it. So we're going to go down this porch. We're going to go through that screen door. And there's a little incline where that wall comes out. Don't let it to the All right, guys. That door just opened for me. <laughs> that door just opened for me. That was so crazy. Well, hello. Hello there. That was weird. That was so weird, and I caught it on camera. That opened so quick, yeah, too. Right. Like, it opened right up for me. I saw it. Holy so crap. You go into the dining room. Oh, wow. That's the most important room in the house. That's where the laundry is. Oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. It is. Wow. The original hard floor. Oh, the original floors. Oh, wow. That's the, the now we Oh, it's fixing the storm. We're going to miss everything else we wanted to do. Everything on the table. Her table was bigger. So this is a stand in. She gave her table away. Her two slides. Yeah. Do it right. And that's fine because we wouldn't be able to fit the room. She had 10 yards. So, look out. That's her. That's her. Look at that, guys. It's fixing the storms all of our homemade jellies. Oh, I think it's fixing the storm on us. Look at this kitchen. Look at that. It's beautiful. Nice little porch. I'm fixing to lose my my battery's fixing to die again guys oh i want to take you guys to the cemetery it's fixing a storm i'm sorry i kind of walked away because it's fixing a storm and we had so much to do yes or even to be close to the kitchen. Oh. Her maids, she teaches them as well. Oh, her okay. snacks. She sits there because this person has one view through the entire meal. If you stand behind that chair and look out oh. that window, yes. you're looking at an outhouse. Yeah. Oh, sure yeah. You know, what anyone thinking about the outhouse when they're having your oh. meal at her table? <laughs> so this is her being considerate of her guests. So she looks at the outhouse. <laughs> she looks at the outhouse. She doesn't want her guests. She doesn't want to embarrass any guests. Look out that window to the outhouse. Oh wow. Oh yeah. She got a real good view of that. Yeah, right. <laughs> is, wow. it, is it a really good view? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This displaced edifice, she called it. Yeah. The infernal box. Uh, right, right. So we can uh, go into the kitchen. 
Oh, the kitchen's gorgeous. I know. It's really gorgeous. I already got my pictures. Nature's air conditioner just got turned on. Yes. So there's yes. Yes. coming behind it. Um, if you all want to beat it to the car, I don't blame you. Uh, but she had a wind burner. We need to cook on this. It works. We don't fire it up this time of year. But it does work? Wow. Oh, they cook on it. We have had, with cooking demonstrations that we were doing regularly, before the pandemic, so it all got wiped out last year. Are you serious? I'm serious. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video of the tour of the house. Um, yeah, it's fixing the storm. I came here, I wanted to make like five videos. I've only made one, so hopefully I get to make more. Hopefully we get to take you to the um, cemetery, but it looks like it's fixing the storm. Shout out to Henriette and Thomas for coming with me. I love you guys. Peace. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, oh, this is a landmark. Or a, it's a Marjorie of Rawlings House of House and Farm. Let me turn this around. Look, it's a historic landmark. They made it historic. Wait a minute, there's a place back there. We never got to look at that. There's an old place right back there. We have the directions to the cemetery, guys. And, um... I'm gonna walk back here. And, um, the cemetery where she's buried, we have the directions, but... It's raining now. We might not even get to go because of the rain. Wonder what this was. Look at this. So wonder what this was. This was probably somebody else's house and they're just starting with it. Hello? All right, guys, this is another house. I don't know if somebody lives here. Maybe this is somebody's house that they live in. Maybe one of them people live here. It's another whole house, but I'm getting soaked. I don't know who's that other house belongs to. I didn't see it earlier or I would have asked. We're gonna get drenched. People to do work for her and, and she, she and that was a tenant's house. She said you can go in there. Oh, let's go. So let's go in there. Guys. It was open. I seen the doors were open. She All right, guys. So this go. was the tenant's house. I was gonna walk in, but I thought, well, what if somebody lives here? I didn't want to do that. He said we could go in there. I got really excited when he said. Oh that. wow. I could live in this one. They could just give as long as I oh, had so my cute. as long as I had my computer. I could live here. Have I'd have to have Wi-Fi on my computer. Ah, oh, look at the porch. So this was the tenant's house. Oh, it's dark. Oh, goodness. Can you see? Yeah. Look at this. The bedroom was in the living room. Look at the party. You ate and cooked and sat and played here. You did everything in this one spot. Oh, there's another bedroom back here. Potatoes? I'm going to try and turn the light on my phone so we can see. Okay. Alright guys, I don't know what we're going to be able to see. Look at this. Look at all the stuff. It's pretty big in here. It is. This is another one that has the table and chairs and, and the bed and stuff. Oh, Thomas has the light. Just Wow. Look at that. Glenda makes um, blankets like that, guys. She was trying to teach me how to make blankets like that. Oh. Well, we are stuck in the, um, in the rain now. This is so cool. So her t she hired people to do work for her, and they got to stay here. 
Well, they did work. Oh, look at that barn door. I want that. You want the barn door? It's pretty. These are, look at the vegetables. Mm. Campbell's, or Van Camp's pork and beans. Oh, my. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they didn't even mention nothing about the house. I didn't even see it until I was leaving. I need to almost see it, but we weren't sure what it was. Well, now we're stuck here. Uh, I hope the rain goes away. Oh. Uh. There's a trap. There's a Wow, I love the sound of the rain on the tundra. Oh. Sounds so cool. This is cool.